Hello everyone, we are here once again to continue with our subject of human physiology, whereby today we will be discussing on blood. So these are our remaining objectives in which we are supposed to cover by the end of this session. The first will require us to describe the function of blood. The second one will require us to describe plasma. The third one will require us to describe the different types of blood groups. The third one, the fourth one will require us to describe production and function of red blood cell. The fifth will require us to describe production and function of red blood cell. The sixth will require us to describe the production and function of platelets. And the last will require us to describe the structure and function of spleen. So, our first presentation will involve the discussion on the first three learning objectives. That is to say, the description of function of blood, the description of plasma, and the description of different types of blood groups. Starting with the first that will involve the description of blood. So, blood is considered to be a connective tissue. It provides one of the means of communication between the cells of different parts of the body and the external environment. So, it's a communicative tissue or connective tissue that offer like a, co a communication or transporti transportive function between cells. Different cells of the body, within the internal part of the body, communicate to one another through blood. They release their product and their entities into the circulation to other part of the body, the scattered entity, nutrient, oxy uh, oxygen and, uh, and so forth and so on. So uh, by doing so, there is a communication between different parts of the cell. But also, the communication between the body itself or the internal part and the external environment. How? We know that as a communicative entity or as a communicative tissue, it passes through different metabolic sites that perform or release out a different amount of heat energy, in which that heat energy is collected into this connective tissue to the external or the to the extremities of the body in order to be distributed. So by doing so, the internal part of the body is controlled or internal temperature, optimal operative temperature of the body is maintained. Is maintained how? It's because blood as it reaches the extremities, it exchanges or it radiates out the heat it has collected or the excess amount of heat it has collected to the other part of the body or to the external part of the body through radiation. So the communication between the internal and the external of the blood can be offered through radiation as the heat is exchanged from the internal part of the body to the external part of the body. Blood is said to make up of about 7% of the body weight. That is to say the contribution of blood in an anatomical man who is considered to have 70 kg of weight is about 7%. How is this 7% obtained? It is estimated that amount of blood in liters in a human being is considered to be to be about 5.6 and above 6 to 7 5.6 up to 7 so that estimated quantity of fluid that is in liter in which if you convert it into kilogram as we know that the metric conversion of liter into kilogram one liter has an equivalence of one kilogram there is where we come up with a description of 70%, which is say about 7 kilograms, and 70 kilograms body weight of anatomical man. This proportion is less in women and considerably greater in children. A gradual decreasing, it's gradually decreasing until the adult level is reached. So, as we compared men and women, women are considered to have less amount of blood compared to men because of different reproductive 
demand or changes they have. That is to say, the menstruation period they have that requires uh, that involves a uh, loss of blood, but also it varies with age, whereby children are considered to have great amount compared to adult. How? It's because of different factor. For instance, production site. Children are said are considered to have more site of production of blood compared to adult. And the physiological changes that uh, an adult is uh, in, in inquiring or is high as achieving makes to have different site of production. By saying so, the changes in blood concentration or amount according to age is considered to be different in childhood and in adult. But also, blood, the blood vessel, is always in motion. That is, say, it's a motive entity, always in motion. The continual flow maintains a fairly constant environment for body cells. But why is it in motion? It's because body cells or body parts of the body, the operative system, are always requiring all these the specify the constituency that are essential for the operation, for instance, nutrients, uh, oxygen, hormones, and so on and so on, all of which are required to be exchanged, transported from one part of the body to another through blood. So by its locomotive state or it is uh, by its motive state, the fairly constant or almost constant environment that the body cells require are achieved. But also we say that volume and the concentration of its constituents that is make up or, or of its containing part of blood are always kept within narrow limits by hemostatic mechanism. As we saw this in the previous session, whereby we knew that we saw that the control of the blood fluid, I mean the body fluid or intravascular fluid is controlled by different hemostatic mechanism, for instance neural mechanism, we saw that the RAS mechanism, the ADH mechanism and so on and so on. All of these are essential to ensure that the concentration and the volume of blood is all fairly at a nearly constant range. So we come up to a function of blood, as we know that we have been discussing function of blood from different level of, of uh, learning or uh, level, the instance or level advance. So this is not a new thing, but let us pass through it again. So we see here blood offers a gaseous function, it offers nutrient function, it offers hormonal function, it offers heat protective function and coating function. Starting with oxygen, we know that blood secretes through the lung to collect oxygen and to return out the carbon dioxide uh, it has collected from the metabolic cells of the body. But we also know that blood collects nutrients from the alimentary canal or the alimentary tract to the tissue for different purposes for energy but also it collects the other uh, metabolic waste to the excretory organ all of this to ensure the constant required condition for the cells are achieved but also hormones are secreted or released from the site of secretion or the glands to the target through blood as I said earlier heat from the active tissue for instance the liver are distributed to other less active tissue for instance to the extremities so now if it happens that even at the extremities, the amount of heat is still high. Now is where there is a next stage of heat through radiation to the external part of the body or the exterior environment. But also blood offers a protective function. For instance, the, it, it has antibodies, as we shall see later, in which it has a peculiar function of uh, identifying and surrounding specified antigens, for instance, microorganisms, and all, by doing so, it protects us from different uh, infection or infestation or all sorts of harmfulness that we call pathology in our body. But also, blood offers clotting factor. The clotting factor 
of uh, coagulation of blood so as to minimize the continual loss of blood as a result of ruptured blood vessel. So once the blood has, uh, has dislocated the site of transportation, for instance, the blood vessels have ruptured, in order to prevent further oozing or flow out of blood from its uh, compartment, it has a special function or mechanism of which it makes uh, the oozing part to, to stop the coagulation of those blood entities or constituents that are near at the site of oozing. So, by seeing the function of blood, the the description of blood that you have speak it in, an, in, in some natural information, we, we come up with, a, with another learning objective that will involve the description of plasma. So, blood has two main subdivision blood as its self. The first subdivision will involve the plasma part and the another subdivision will involve the cellular content. So we will first discuss on the plasma part and later on we shall see on the cellular content of the cellular part. So plasma is considered to be a blood composed compose content or component that is a, has a straw colored transparent field. So it is considered to be to have straw colored or almost yellow or amber like colored and it is kind transparent transparent. That is to say it allows a, a light to pass by doing so it allows some minimal observation on other part on other part on or on another side of, of it of it. So plasma in which different type of cells are suspended. So within this straw colored transparent field, the cellular content of blood now is where they are suspended. So blood has a co constituency, or con it constitutes about 55% of plasma and about 45% of cells. So we see that plasma has high amount of constituation in blood compared to blood cells. So here is a diagrammatic description of plasma and cellular content. So you see this is a straw colored fluid, transparent, straw colored almost yellow, not yellow, but kind of yellow or amber like color. And at the lower part is the cellular content. You see here we have the red blood cells, we have the leukocytes and other type of cells. So this is a, it's like a, a suspended amount of blood cells and here is a clotted amount of blood cells. So one of these habits, if it, it does not maintain its motive state or if it's not in motion for quite some time, it starts to clot or to agglutinate as you see here. After some time, the blood or the cellular content are the ones that start to agglutinate. This is a, a coated cellular content of blood. And this is a, a suspended cellular content of blood. So the suspension we, is uh, achieved by gravity, where for instance we have a spe specialized machine, or uh, a centrifuge machine, of which once the blood in a mixed state is is put in that machine, the same the centrifuge machine offers a centrifugal force that will enable the cells at a certain uh, rotatory speed to uh, to suspend from the mixed reset to a lower state. So here we see we have the 55 percent which uh, has more amount of plasma and the 45 percent which has less amount or which has more amount of cells. So, plasma as a uh, suspending fluid of blood has the following constituents whereby the constituents of plasma are considered to be 90 to, 90 to 92 of water and the remaining percent are the dissolved substance that involve the following. So, if you take plasma, 90 to 92 is 
water and the remaining 10 to 80 percent is the, the following substance which are dissolved within it. The, the 90 to 22 percent is the one that makes the, the, the plasma to have that uh, transparent character because we know that water is transparent. But the remaining 10 to 8 percent is the one that makes the almost the amber or yellow like nature or color. So we have the following substance where the first is plasma protein that involves the albumin, the globulins that involve that include the antibodies, the fibrinogen and the protein factor. The inorganic salt or mineral salt that involves sodium chloride, sodium bicarbonate, potassium, magnesium salt, magnesium, phosphate, iron, calcium, copper, iodine and cobalt. These are inorganic salt or what you call the mineral salt. Some of them are found in a single form and some of them are, formed in, are found in a compound form. So mutants also are also found. As you can see we have the monosaccharides, we have the minus acids, we have the gaseous and vitamins, but also we have organic waste material where we have urea and we have uric acid and creatinine. All are produced from different parts. For instance, uric acid and urea, we know that they can be formed in, uh, in the liver. But also we have hormones, different, different hormones are transported to other parts of the body through blood. And we have enzymes, for instance, certain protein enzymes are also suspended within plasma. But far more, we have oxygen, now we have gases, where we have oxygen from the lungs. We have carbon dioxide produced as a result of metabolism in the cell cells, and we have the nitrogen with a low amount of its concentration. So, by seeing one substance which is suspended among the 8, 8 to 10 percent, starting with the plasma protein, plasma protein which makes up about 7 percent of the plasma. So, we see the protein has more, more percent compared to other substances that are suspended within the plasma. So it, uh, it makes about 7%. Maybe probably is the one that makes the, 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 the plasma to be yellowish or to have straw-like color. As you know, protein, though they may differ, but take an example, even a fried egg, it has some property of having that yellowish coloration. So for this case, we see that protein has more constituents compared to other substances, about 7%. So plasma protein are normally contain, retained within the blood because they are too big to escape through the capillary pores into the tissue. So anatomically, we know that uh, capillaries have some pores where uh, the uh, different entities or particles with the smaller size compared to the pores can penetrate to the interstitial or to the uh, uh, extra vesicular compartment. But for the case of plasma protein, they have large size that cannot penetrate through these capillary pores. So by doing so, it makes this plasma protein to be found only in plasma. So by saying, by seeing this, if we find that uh, extracellular compartment, I mean extravascular compartment or the interstitial space or other part of the body that is not involved in the intravascular compartment is having plasma protein that we describe by pathology as there is a possibility a certain capillary group of capillary is leaking or is, is leaking out this plasma protein. So by doing saying so, plasma protein are only to be found within the, the intravascular compartment or within the plasma of blood. That because they have more large size that cannot penetrate through the capillary pores. So they are, have a greater responsibility of creating what you know as osmotic pressure, of have the, in which they are estimated to have an osmotic pressure of about 25 millimeter of mercury or in terms of kilopascal of about 3.3 kilopascal. So this pressure is the one that keeps plasma fluid within the circulation. So, uh, with some little of uh, chemistry, we, we know that uh, osmotic pressure is generated as a result of presence of this uh, solid content. For instance, the solid particle 
are the one in which create that osmotic pressure. The pressure that is the, the osmotic pressure is the pressure that stops the, the solvent state or the liquid to move from the uh, external, ex uh, the, the one part of the, of the, of the membrane or the, of the car, or well, one part of the membrane to the other part of the membrane. This is the pressure now of which it, it holds the fluid. It holds the fluid not to, 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 to move from one part of the membrane to another. So if it happens, this pressure is low because of the low amount of, uh, of the plasma protein. What will happen is that fluid now will now move to, different, to, to the other part of the membrane that have more osmotic pressure compared to the one which is within the, the blood vessel. So by knowing so, we see the importance of this plasma protein is that in order for the fluid of the plasma or for the water of the plasma to be, to be attained at all, all cost and time, this plasma protein are the ones that are supposed to be at the required amount. By saying so, we see the importance even where are not supposed to be leaked out for the, for the, for the blood vessels because of their importance. They are used to generate osmotic pressure that is necessary in the, in the balancing or in, in absorption or it's necessary in prevention of the loss of fluid from the, uh, the intravesicular compartment to the interstitial space. So, if plasma protein levels fall because of the reduction of reduction or loss from blood vessel, osmotic pressure is also reduced and the fluid moves into tissue or edema and body cavity, as I said earlier. So, it may happen as a result of either poor or underproduction of this plasma protein or leakage from the blood capillaries. Maybe the blood capillaries have some pathology that leaks, makes the, 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 the plasma protein to leak. All those, of those factors can make this plasma protein to, to decrease in level and once they decrease in level the osmotic pressure that we say is the one that keeps the fluid within the, the intravascular compartment will, will decrease as a result of it decrease now fluid will now follow the other part of the membrane or compartment having more osmotic pressure so it will flow from the intravascular compartment into the interstitial space and even making the individual or the body parts or the tissue to be in a tie, that is to say, to have more fluid within, or even the body cavity. So, with, for instance, uh, once with someone is having maybe peritonitis, or uh, he has, he has a pure uh, effusion, is a result of imbalance of this, uh, of this osmotic pressure, the result of pathology that interferes with the plasma, uh, balance between the intravascular compartment and the extravascular compartment. So this plasma protein involves uh, protein. It means uh, there are varieties, there are different types of protein, but it typically it involves the following: uh, like albumins, but also we have globulins. So, uh, despite of the main function of, of uh, attaining the osmotic pressure of 25 millimeter of mercury. They also have a specific function. For instance, albumin, you see, these are formed in the liver. They all are formed in the liver. But for the case of albumin, they are abundant in plasma protein. So among the, called the uh, within the concentration or the amount of plasma protein, albumin are the ones which are considered to be abundant or to, really to have a, a high amount of, of, of this concentration uh, or its makeup. So, why are they many, or what's their function now if they are, if they are found within the plasma? Their main function in the plasma is, that is to, to attain the normal osmotic pressure. So, this is the main function of albumin within the, the plasma, is that to attain the normal osmotic pressure. But also, albumin can offer a, 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 a carrier function, as they can be a carrier molecule, for lipids and steroid hormones. So there are other hormones which are transported through the blood, are, are, are transported from one part to another through these carrier, carrier molecules or abdomens which offer that uh, like a carrier, like, like, like a bus for this molecule or for this hormone to be transported from 
transported from one part of the body to the other. The other one is globulins. Globulins are also found or formed in the liver, and the others, the other which are found within the lymphoid tissue, as we shall see later. So the lymphoid tissue and the, glo and the liver are the ones that form globulins. For the different in the case of albumin, which only the liver is forming, but for the case of globulins, is that the, the liver and the lymphoid tissue are the ones that are forming. So we shall see here, you can see here the, the, the globulins have this way, have the following function. Well, the first you have the, have the function as antibodies, and the second one has the uh, transportive function, just as the case of albumin has it offers a transportive function. But also we have the other function of inhibition of some of proteolytic enzymes. So for the case of antibodies, the, 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 the globulins are the ones which are antibodies, the antibodies, they are the ones that are the policemen that identify, they are the ones that track, track any, 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 any patho pathogen or any, any pathology or for case pathology, pathogen invasion within the, 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 the human body. So, they are considered to be complex protein that are produced by lymphocytes. For that case, we said they are also part of that produced by lymphocytes and play an important part in immunity. So they are, they are complex because of their, their, their protein arrangement. Their protein nature is complex, but their complexity is the one that makes them to be antibodies, that the ability to identify a different foreign antigen and to engulf or to, I mean, to surround them. So they bind to and initialize foreign material such as antigens or antigens of microorganisms. So for instance, let's say a, a viral infection or bacterial infection or any sort of infection having its certain antigen, it having its certain antigen on its surface, these antibodies are the one that uh, identify like this antigen that is circulating now in the system is not ad uh, identified by the body. So by doing so, if it's not identified, these are the ones that, that are responsible to, to surround them or to neutralize them that they may, the other, 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 other cellular activity or uh, immuno, immunocellular activity to come and, and uh, attack the possible antigens or microorganisms that have invaded. We shall see later when we discuss in case of immunology or in, in, in how this immune system is functioning. So, other function, as we said, for the case of other means, uh, globulins offer transportation for hormones and mineral salts. Yeah, hormones and, and mineral salts. For instance, thyroglobulin. Thyroglobulin is a carrier of hormone thyroxine and transferring as the mineral ion. So these are the two examples of the, of the transportive function that globulin offer. We see that we have the thyroglobulin, just for the word thyro is derived from the word thyroxine. So if the thyroglobin is a special if the globulin that carries thyroxine to other part of the body. But also we have what we call transferrin. Transferrin is the, the globulin that offers or carries the mineral ion to other part of the body. But also we we see it offers the inhibition of some of the proteolytic enzyme that enzyme that uh, are having the the effect of digesting uh, the, 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 the protein substance. So for example, microglobin that inhibits trypsin activity. Trypsin, you see that it's having a property of, of disintegrating a peptide to a dipeptide to a peptide state. So that uh, this disintegrating activity of some enzymatic function for this as trypsin can be inhibited by microglobin. The effect can be on the part of the body or the cell or even within the, 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 the blood that can be measured other enzymes or can digest other enzymes making the, the function of protein in, in, a, in a large molecular cell steps to be, to be affected. So, apart from the, the plasma protein that we have seen, we have albumin and the globulin offer the osmotic function, the immune function and the carrier or carrier function. We also have what we call inorganic salts or the minerals. So the blood also is composed of inorganic salt that involve a wide variety of activity, include cell formation. So these minerals are also involved in cell formation, uh, are also involved in contraction of muscles, uh, 
for instance, uh, see the, the impassive uh, transmission of frequencies, as you saw in case of sodium, uh, formation of secretion and the maintenance of balance between acid and alkal alkalis. So, acid and alkalis are also maintained, for instance, sodium uh, bicarbonate or the bicarbonate compound that is circulating within the body. It's also uh, helping in buffering the alkalinity and acidity that is required within the plasma. So in health that is likely that the alkal alkaline state or alkalinity acid is expressed in terms of pH. So the blood is considered to be more alkaline or slightly alkaline. And we measure the alkalinity or acidity in the potential hydrogen or the scale of pH, which is, measure, is measuring the amount of hydrogen concentration. So the potential hydrogen or pH that measures the hydrogen concentration is the one which describes uh, on its scale from 0 to, to 14. Where does it lie? Well, we can see that uh, human blood is considered to have a pH range of 7.35 to 7.5.45. That's a, a slight deviation of about 3.5 to 4.5 uh, decimal deviation from the, the neutral state of 7, of which we know the pH at neutral state is having a, a score of 7 by ongoing complicated series of chemical activity involving buffering system. So, this 7.35 to 7.45 is maintained within the blood by this ongoing chemical activity um, uh, of which they are buffering the, 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 the system. So, as you can attain that 7.35 to 7.45, as you can see, we, as I said, we have hydrocarbons that also offer the maintenance of this variation. We see that uh, the gaseous uh, have a, uh, the gaseous content have an effect in, in altering the, the, the acidity or the acidity, but you see the hydrocarbons have the, bu the buffering effect of, of attaining this uh, the, the, the operative buffering or operative uh, pH level. So we other function as I said the nerve the nerve impasse function for instance we have sodium ions we have calciums. Uh, we have potassium, we have phosph uh, the phosphate ions that are also used in cell formation, for instance, in DNA and the RNA productions. All these are distributed to the cells, but where are they found? They are found at the, at the, at the, at the, at the blood, uh, within the blood. So the blood offers like it's like a well where all, all materials that are essential for different metabolic or cellular activity are found. But also, apart from the inorganic waste that we have discussed, we have also organic waste, I mean not waste, inorganic material, we have what we call organic waste. So organic waste involves things like urea, involves things like creatinine, involves things like uric acid, or which are waste product of, uh, of protein metabolism. The protein metabolism that takes an abundant state within the liver uh, offers this uh, uh, organic waste, urea, creatinine and the uric acid of which they are formed in the liver and conveyed in blood to the kidney for excretion. So the metabolic activity within the liver that involves the metabolism of protein and later on offers this excretory product, they are the ones which are conveyed to the kidney via the, uh, the blood. So why are they taken to the kidney for excretion? Because if they are committed within the blood, they are in the body, they become toxic. So we see how important it is, it is the communication between the liver uh, and the kidney. Why? Because the liver needs to excrete the waste product that, that may be harmful. And how can it excrete it? Because blood is the one that carries all them away to the kidney and the kidney excrete it out. But also we have carbon dioxide which is released by all cells which in which is conveyed, for the, is conveyed to the lungs for excretion also. So also carbon dioxide is also released out to the, uh, to, to the lungs through blood. That's a connection between the lungs and all other uh, uh, body cells of which are undergoing metabolic activity producing the carbon dioxide of which it may be harmful if it happens it's accumulated in large amount. So, but also we have hormones. So, uh, as I said that all, almost all hormones are, are transported or are, are transported to their target point through blood. So these are chemical compounds synthesized by endocrine glands, 
and hormone pass directly from cell of the glands into the blood which transport them to the target tissue and organ elsewhere in the body where they influence cellular activity. So uh, from the site of production, the granulocyte, granulocyte or the site of uh, endocrine mm, uh, cell, cells or tissue, these hormones are released to the blood and are, t- are sent or are taken to the target cells where we can see a cellular response or an effect of that hormone. But also, we have, you can see we have gaseous exchange. It offers a site of transportation of the gaseous material from the site where we can see from the site in which these gaseous materials are produced. So oxygen, carbon dioxide and nitrogen are transported around the body in solution and in plasma. So oxygen and the carbon dioxide are also transported in combination with hemoglobin and red blood cell. So we have these three gases in which before they, they, they can be taken to the to, to different parts of the body, they have to be converted into in form of they have to be made in form of solution uh, within the plasma. So they can be taken from the site where they are produced to other part of the body. But for the specified ho- gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide, we see that oxygen and carbon dioxide are transported with specified molecule within the the, net, the cellular content of the blood. For this, uh, for this case, we are speaking of hemoglobin, oxyhemoglobin or carboxyhemoglobin is the c- compound form in which transport these gases. So most oxygen is carried in combination with hemoglobin and most carbon dioxide is as bicarbonate ion dissolved uh, in, in, in plasma. So carbon dioxide in most form is transported as bicarbonate ion dissolved in plasma. So atmospheric nitrogen enters the body in the same way as other gases that is present with plasma but has no physiological function. So Nitrogen is there, as you see it has higher concentration within the atmosphere, so we found ourselves just inhaling it and it's also circulating within the body, but it has no any function within the, the, the body, or any physiological function within the body, and it is found within the plasma, it, has, it doesn't have any binding molecule in which it can be transported with to, to the other part of the body. So by seeing those functions, we will start we will continue with the discussion on blood groups. So, human body has is considered to have different uh, uh, categorization of blood groups. So, individuals with different types of antigen in surface of their red blood cell. This antigen, which I inherit, will determine the individual's blood group. In addition, individuals make antibody to this antigen, but no, not, but not to their own type of antigen. Since if they did, the antigen and the antibody would react, causing transfusion reaction. So, as you say, the blood has plasma part and the cellular part. The cellular part is the one that is responsible for for the blood grouping is because the identification of the different blood uh, are found within the surface protein or as what we know the surface protein are the antigen which are the, they are found on the surface of red blood cells so this surface protein or antigen which are found in the red blood cells are the one which identify a specified blood group so this surface protein or antigens are inherited from, uh, from uh, the close link of uh, the father and mother, of, uh, yeah, from the biological link, biological host link. So, if individual makes antibody to this antigen, but not to their own type of antigen. So, the link between, or the association between antibody and antigen is that antigen, antibody, are the one which identify if this surface protein of this blood is it related to, to the to the body or if it is not, does not related to the body so if you have a, the, the, the antibody of your own cannot identify or cannot fight against the antigen of your body is because it knows or it, it identifies them that the, the antigen of the, of the the specified antigen of the cells 
are the ones which are found within the body. So there is no way antibody will fight the antigen of its own unless if there is any uh, abnormality that has risen. But if it happens that the human body is invaded with an antigen which is different from those antigen found within the body, then the, bo the antibody of the body we have now to identify this antigen. The situation is like this, that antibodies, as we said, these are the plasma protein, the proteins. Uh, these proteins have this function of, of, of identifying if this, uh, they find another protein pair from the, uh, uh, another protein, uh, for instance, we are speaking of antigen. I say, I say that antigen is a protein found on the surface of specified uh, compound or organism. So this one cells have surface protein which you call antigen and the and the organ microorganism have, have also surface protein of which you call antigen. So the cells and the microorganism are the one that has an antigen, but the antibody are secreted by the body of the organism. So they are the protein that is circulating within the body. They are not found on the surface of the okay of the cell or of microorganism. They are just protein formed by the organism or by the body and are circulating. And, we, and the, the antibody antigen reaction occurs when the, um, the surface protein, the, the protein that are circulating, react or meet with the surface protein of specified cell or specified microorganism. And the, if it happens that the surface, pro the, 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 the antibodies or the circulating proteins which you know as antibodies, they meet or they react with the, with, with the, with the surface antigen or the protein on a specified cell or a specified, a specified microorganism. If <coughs> the antibody will not identify because this antibody has the tendency of knowing the, the surface antigen or the surface protein of the body. If it happens that they, they do not know or they, they cannot match, they cannot identify if the, that surface antigen or surface protein is not similar to the one which they know, they will cause a reaction, a reaction which will be bad to the organism. But if it happens, it happens this uh, surface, the circulating protein, of which you know as antibodies, they match with the surface antigen of, of, a, of a particular cell or of a particular organism, and they find that they they are, they are looking similar to other antigen of other cells, there will be no reaction. Now for this case, for the case of uh, blood grouping now, we are speaking of the antigen or the surface protein of blood cells, specified, specific uh, red blood cells, and the uh, circulating antibodies which are formed or formulated within the body by the liver. So if it happens that your body, your body cells have the specified antigens or surface protein, of which they, they are identified by the surface, by, by the, the antibody which are circulating. Now if it happens your body is invaded by other, uh, is transfused by, by blood cells that have antigens or surface protein that cannot be identified by the antibody or circulating protein that are within the body or formulated by, by the liver, there will be what we call a transfusion reaction. A reaction that we fight to say that this cell that is within the body is not similar to other cells, so they must be, they, it must be eradicated. So by doing so, it, it will react, or it will, they happen what we call a coagulation, and this coagulative effect can be, can have a, a, an effect on the organism or the human being himself, or can have a minimal uh, effect in which, if it evades itself on the other, and the next time, it will be fatal for the organism. So when blood transfusion from one person to another were first attempted, immediate or delayed agglutination and hemolysis of the red blood cell often occur, resulting in a typical transfusion reaction that frequently lead to death. I repeat, when blood transfusion from one person to another were first attempted, immediate or delayed agglutination of hemolysis of the red blood cell often occur, resulting in a typical transfusion reaction that frequently lead to death. So, as I said earlier, if it happens that the, blood, the, the, the antibodies of the body match with the antigen, surface antigen of the red blood cells, there will be no any reaction. 
But if it happens that the antibody is generated by the body, specified by the liver, have a reaction with the surface antigen of another blood cell from different body and so the, the blood cells that are not from within your body that let us say you have been transfused, you have received the blood you, you had the uh, anemia and then you have been transfused with blood but the blood that has been transfused has a different match compared to those blood that your, your, your body is forming the, the has a different surface antigen compared to that blood your body is formed this surface protein, this antibody will identify the, the invading blood cells with a different surface antigen as a, something that is not common, that is not normal and should be eradicated. And we have what we call an immediate or delay. So the, the, trans the, the agglutination in hemolysis, agglutination is that the, the antibody antigen reaction, the protein reaction that will cause the, the blood cells to, to, to bind one another, to not to be in a, a liquid or dispersive state, but instead they form like a, a hard, a solid, solid, solid like state that cannot, is a solid like state that is, it cannot move, it's not in a liquid form. So the solid like state which, which is formed as a result of agglutination is because of the antibody antigen reaction that made the, this protein to agglutinate. And later on, what can happen also is hemolysis. Hemolysis is the breakdown of these blood cells. So the reaction of the agglutination in hemolysis it can be immediately or it can be delayed. But the, what it can result, it can often result to death. So it may react, but it may, the reaction may be not sufficient enough to cause death. But in most cases, the reaction is considered to to be sufficient enough to cause death. This is what is happening when you transfuse a different blood group with different antigen to uh, a body with a different uh, anti, anti, anti antigen also of blood group. There will be a reaction between antibody and the antigen. So, particularly there are two types of antigen or surface protein that are much likely than other to cause blood transfusion. So there are in, in, in a, the, 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 the surface, the blood, blood cell surface has multiple number of, uh, of surface protein, all to call the antigens, the identification system. But there are two main blood uh, antigen or surface antigen that are more likely to cause any transfusion reaction if it happens, they mismatch with, with their antibodies. So the first system we have with the OAB, system of antigens and the other system we have the RSS or RH system of antigens. All these are surface protein or what we call antigens are found within the surface of blood cells. And if it happens this surface protein or antigens mismatch with what the antibody knows as their their surface the common surface protein found within the body of the specified individual, what will happen is what we call transfusion reaction. So if individuals are transfused with, transfused with blood of the same group that is processing the same antigen on the surface of the cell. For instance, patient A is having a, a blood group or is having blood, blood cells that ha are having the same antigen or surface protein similar to the patient B who is about to donate the blood. That's what, that's what we say the same group that both patient A and B have the same antigen that are similar. The immune system will not recognize them as foreign and will not reject. So it's because, it's because the patient A and B who are transfusing, one is transfusing the other, they have the similar, they have the similar antigen or surface protein. The immune system or the antibody which are responsible for the identification of any invasion uh, will not cause any re reaction because they recognize them. They recognize them as similar to what are found within the body. So there will, no, there will be no reaction and no or rejection within the body. But if they are given blood from an individual of different blood type, for instance, uh, patient A and B uh, have different blood group, that patient A has a different surface antigen compared to patient B who is also having a different surface antigen. What will happen is that once their blood are mixed, 
or are transfused to one another, or one is transfused the other, one is transfused to another, there will be a reaction. It's because the immune system or the, uh, the antibody that are responsible for the identification of any invasion of any cells or microorganism will identify the, the new or the donated blood to have a different surface antigen which is not the same as what it knows or what it identifies within the body. As a result, we will get a, a, a transcription reaction, it will get a rejection, a coagulative reaction that, or that signifies a rejection of the say, donated blood from the other patient. So within different type of antigen on red cells, the immune system will amount or will mount an attack upon them and destroy the transfused cell. So what is the, the antibody will destroy the transfused cell, cells, the cells that have antigen. Antibodies are the ones fighting the cells having the specified antigens. They are the ones that agglutinate them. And the agglutination between the fight between the two forms an agglutination of which has a, a, a fatal effect of death. So this is the basis of transfusion reaction. The blood types, the donor and the recipients are incompatible. So if it happens that here is where we come with a point of compatibility. So if it happens that blood, the, transf the transfused blood from the donor, donor is the one who gives out the blood, the recipient or the receiver is the one who receives the blood. So if it happens that the donor, the one who gives out the blood, gives the blood with different antigen or surface antigen, that is to say the cells, the red blood cells of the donor, the, the red blood cells of the donor have a different antigen compared to the red blood cells which are found within the body of the recipient, what will happen? The antibody which are found within the body of the recipient, the one which identify the, the antigen, will strike or will fight back the, the blood cells, the red blood cells of the donor because it's because they have a different antigen, surface antigen of which are most common or are common found within the body of the recipient. So that the reaction as a result of transfusion between the donor and the recipient is that we what we call a incompatibility, blood group incompatibility, that there is no compatibility between the donor blood group and recipient blood group as a result of the antigen antibody reaction. But if it happens that there is a, a compatibility because the donor red blood cell surface antigen match with the donor red blood cell surface antigen which are found within the I mean the donor red blood cell surface antigen match with the recipient's red blood cell surface antigen. So it's because if they match with the recipient red blood cell surface antigen, the recipient antibody will have no reaction upon the, uh, the donor red blood cell surface antigen surface antigen that has been donated into the recipient's body. So this uh, antigen system starting with the ADO system is the one who is about 55% of the population. So the 50, about 55 population 55% of the population are either type, type A antigen, type B antigen, or both. And the remaining have neither A or B type antigen. That is called O. So we can see in the ABO system we have the A, B, and O. But uh, the constitution, the division, the division between A, B, and O is that A and B, or A and B both, individual having A and B, or individual having both A and B, are constituting about 55% of the population. And the, and the remaining 45% is the individual having O blood group. That is to say, individual with O blood group are the one with who are many within the population. So how do you say the individual is having blood group A, blood group B? Is having blood group A is because antigen, we identify the blood group by identifying the surface antigen of red blood cells. So your, your surface antigen or your red blood cells are the ones who are having 
uh, they have antigen A because they have antigen A we identify your group as the group B if your surface had in antigens a red blood cell surface antigen have blood have a antigen B then your blood group will identify as B and there are individuals who are having both surface antigen A and B on their red blood cells uh, in this surface an antigen A and B we consider the individual to have blood group A and B or to have blood group A B not A and B to have blood group A B yes and for if they are, uh, if they are individual for those individuals who are lacking surface antigen is that the red blood cells are lacking this surface antigen they are considered to have blood group O there is a nickname of called, uh, known as the blood group zero zero antigen having no surface antigen so for, for, for the having no surface antigens within there on the surface of the red blood cells so the corresponding antibodies are called anti-A and the anti-B so the corresponding antibodies are the one we call anti anti A and anti B in blood group A is individual cannot make anti A and therefore do not have these antibodies in their plasma how can we ex uh, explain this is that A is the antibody antibody against A antibody against B how is this take an individual with blood group A an individual with blood group A cannot make a, a antibody A instead it make antibody anti anti antigen ag uh, against an, an antigen antibody how ok it is like this you have a blood group A you are considered to be an individual with blood group A it is because your surface antigen is A the surface antigen of your red blood cells are considered to have surface antigen A but in order to, for your surface antigen to be compatible with your surface antibody or not to cause no reaction the antibodies are always producing uh, are always produce, producing against a different anti antigen so if it is antigen A the body will produce something which is different from A something which is different from A it is B so your, your body will, uh, maybe for instance your body makes antigen A in order for antigen A the animal says to be safe the body has to produce the antibody that will be, will be against against B is because antigen A is the one which is found and antigen B is not found in the body so anti the, uh, the antibody will be against the B which is not found in the body so that is to say if you have antigen A then your surface or your, your antibody will be anti B that is it will be against the, the antigen which is not found in the body and which is the antigen which is not found in the body the antigen B and if your antigen B, the body surface, red blood cells have the surface antigen which is B, then the body will formulate antibody which will be against the antigen which is not found in the body. Which is the antigen which is not found in the body is the antigen A. So the reverse versa is true. The reverse versa is the one how they work antibody A are the antibodies and the antigen. If you have antigen A, then the body will make the antigen antibody which is against the antigen which is not found within the body the blood group B individual for the same reason makes only anti A it's because you have anti surface antigen is B and it does not recognize it, it, should, it should not recognize uh, any, any antigen with the uh, with surface A then it must make an antibody A so for the case of blood group A B makes neither and the blood group O make both anti A and the anti B so the A B it is because for those who have blood group A B, they have both surface antigen A and they have the surface antigen B. So the body cannot make either of them, either A or B. 
of the antibodies because if it makes the the, the antibody against A, this antibody against A will go and fight the cells. It is because the cells still have antigen A on the surface. The same if the, the it makes antibody B. The antibody B will go and fight it because it is having the antigen B on the cell surface. So it is by group A, B are the one that do not make the antibodies. So the antibody free. That's why for the case of those individuals with blood group A, B, they are considered to be a recipient or a receiver. It is because the body cannot make antibodies. Why? It is because the antigen surface have both A and B. So they cannot make anything that will like, likely or will destroy them because of what they have both A and B surface antigen. But for the case of blood group O, they make both. For this case, they are known as donor but they make both A and B. It is because the body does not have either A or B of the antigen. The surface antigen lacking both A and B surface antigen. So the body will make an antigen, I mean an antibody that will be against any A and B that will enter the body. Why? It is because the body do not have, do not have any surface antigen A or B within it. So by saying so, an individual with blood group O are considered to be the universal donor. Why? Because they are, their red blood cells are having no surface antigen. That is means they can invade uh, anybody without being identified by, by, by the antibody system because the antibody have to match with the antigen. And if it happens that the, uh, the, the red blood cell surface do not have antigen, then the antibodies have nothing to identify. So the blood will f the, you can, tra can be transferred transfused with no reaction under the category of ABO system. Oh. Yeah, because the surface antigen of the blood cells are lacking antigen. Are lack the, the, the blood, blood cells of blood group O are lacking antigen A and B. So there is no antibody to be formed against them. So it's safe. But for the case of an individual or a donor or an individual with blood group O to be transfused it cannot be transferred by blood group A or B or A B. It is because this their body makes the their antibody which is against the, the antigens which are not found within their body. That's to say both antigen A and B. So the reaction will be against any blood with any antigen surface, either it's the antigen A or the antigen B or the antigen A and B. By saying so, antibody uh, blood group O individuals considered to be a, a universal donor, that is, his blood can invade any anybody without being identified due to lack of anti its antigen, but cannot receive blood from all those individuals with antigen proteins. That is, say, antigen A, antigen B, or antigen A, B. It is because their body makes antibody that can react any either of the antigen surface. This is where we differentiate a uh, universal receive, uh, recipient who is considered to receive due to is lack of the antibody within its body and the universal donor who is considered to give out due to its lack of the antigen, surface antigen on its red blood cells. So here is a diagrammatic description of the antigens and the antibody. I said that uh, for the case of ABO system of antigen recognition, here is our red blood cells here is a red blood cells having an antigen A, the surface protein A, antigen A. So this individual is considered to have blood group A and is making, is considered to be a blood group A because the surface protein of red blood cells are having antigen A. But what does it make for its protection? It makes antibody B. Antibody B these are antibodies, the protein uh, molecules that are formed by the liver. As we studied in the plasma protein, we have the globulins. So these are the globulins formulated by the liver. But for this case, they are specified globulins against anything that will be different from this. That's why they are called the anti B. Anything. But you know, the surface protein, the, the, we have two main surface protein in the ABO system we have A and we have B. A and B, these are the main surface protein. So for this case, anything that will have a, a surface antigen different from A, 
for this case it will be B. So any blood with the blood group B, that is if you say any blood with the surface, surface antigen B will be attacked by this blood and this body antibody. So you go and attack, you identify like okay, this match is not A, this match is B. And we are supposed to fight, fight against B. The antibodies you say that we are supposed to fight or we are supposed to aggregate or to attack the antigens that are different from A, which are also are what we call B. So anti antibody B, we have what attack any blood with surface antigen B. The same way is the, the case of antigen B. This is an individual with blood group B is because the surface antigen is, is, uh, is having surface antigen B. But the body or the liver will make the goblins or uh, the antibodies that are against the, uh, any new cell or any red, red blood cell that will have a different antigen on its surface. For this case, they will make, uh, they will make antibody that will go against this. You see, they match with their, with their, their opposite the opposite antigen. This antibody will fight against A it's because A is not what the body recognizes. Their body recognizes B, it does not recognize A. So this will fight A because it's not found within their body. Likewise, uh, the B will fight against the antigen B because their body does not recognize B. Instead, it recognizes A. For the case of AB, AB is that they have both A and B. So by this sense, you cannot make either A, you cannot make either B. Because if you make A, it will go against the surface antigen B and, and, and then A. It will kill the A in the cell. If, it, if you make against B, it will go against the surface antigen B. It will kill the A in the cell. So if you make antigens, antibodies A and B, or A or B, it will kill the red blood cell likewise because it has both the surface antigen. By saying so, this makes the individual to be the receiver. It's because his body, the body of this individual with AB, does not make any antibody. So it will make him to be, pot to be potential, to be likely to be transferred with either blood group B, that is to receive blood with surface antigen B, or to receive blood with surface antigen A. It's because either of these surface antigen, if they invaded, they cannot be killed by the antibody because the body does not make any of the antibody. Why does the body making does not make any antibody? It is because the surface antigen of the red blood cells are having both B and A. So if it make it will kill the red blood cell which will destroy the red blood cell. By doing so it makes this individual to be a universal receiver. For the case of uh, the antigen O or the uh, antigen O the O that group O they do not have their surface antigen, you can see there is no any protein surface antigen which is found within the cell blood cells. So, but their body or their immune system or the, their liver produce both antigen A and B. Why? It is because their body recognizes their red blood cell having no any surface antigen. So anything that will come with antigen surface or surface antigen like A, B or AB is not common within their body. So they have both antigen A and they have I mean they have both antibody B and the antibody antibody A and the antibody B. So they will attack anything that will have nothing, that will have anything on their surface, any antigen, either A, B, B or A. By doing so, this makes an individual not to, to be transfused with either of these three above, A, B, B or A, but only the individual with the same blood group, that individual with the same blood, blood cell, blood cell having no surface antigen. But it's because it does not make any, 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 any surface antigen, it can be transfused to either of this group. It's because once you transfuse this antibody, will not recognize anything because there is no surface antigen. So any of this group can receive blood from that group. Oh, after that. We have seen the universal recipient because blood group A, B makes neither anti A, no anti B, no antibodies. They are known as universal recipient. We have seen there how A, B recognize uh, or are known as the universal recipient. So transmission of either type A or B blood into this individual is safe. 
sees there is no any antibody to react with them. So in the ABO system, the individual with the safe transfusion or the individual who can receive the blood with no any likelihood of being or have, of having transfusion reaction is an individual with the AB antigen surface. So anyone with different antigen surface from AB is difficult if he, he is more selective in terms of transfusion because it will require anything uh, the blood group that will match with his. But for the case of universal recipient, is the one who is safe. Why is he safe? Because he does not his body does not, not make antibodies against the surface antigen. Because his surface and his red blood cell is containing both surface antigen. So it cannot not make any surface anti antigen that can destroy its red blood cell. So for the case of group O have neither a or B antigen that do not have any surface antigen as we said so they are the red cell membrane and the red cell membrane so their blood may be safely transfused they can, they can be received by any because they cannot be identified by any antibody due to lack of surface antigen so it's, that's why he's known as universal donor but he cannot receive from other A, B or A, B or A, B or A, a and B or A, B why? because he is having antigen antibody that will fight the antibody of these blood groups. So here, this is a diagram showing blood group. We have A, B, A, B, and O, the ABO system. So we see here we have the antigen A that makes the antigen B, antigen A that makes the antigen antibody B that will go against the, antigen, the blood with the antibody with antigen B, A equals B makes A, so the counter the counterparts make the opposite. Makes the opposite. If it antigen A to make B, if it B to make A. Likewise for the case of antigen A and B does not make A either of antigen A, antibody A or antibody B as a result because it has it is having both antigens. And for the case of that group O, it has been having no anti surface antigen, but it is having both antibody A and B so it cannot receive. So you see here, uh, donor, as a donor, as a donor, blood group A is compatible with A and B only. So it can trans be transferred to an individual with a similar surface antigen A, or to an individual with the antigen A, with the surface of antigen A and B, because this antigen A and B can make the, him too much. So you can receive from A or from A and B. Uh, and the incompatibility will rise if it is received from daddy as a donor. I mean, as a donor, he can be, he can be transfused. He can give blood to an individual with blood group A or to an individual with blood group A and B. But the uh, incompatibility or reaction will happen to the car if he gives blood to blood group B. Why? It is because blood group B has an anti antibody that is against the blood group A and also blood group O it is because blood group O has an anti anti antibodies that are against blood group A as you can see here likewise for the case of individual blood group B is having is compatible to blood group B and AB how is this? is because if he is having similar antigen B that are also found in other individuals antigen B but also is having similar antigen A and B surface that can match with this antigen, so it is compatible. But he cannot receive from, from blood group A is, is because he has uh, he has the antibodies that are against the blood group A, and also he has the antibodies that are going against the blood group. And also, he cannot receive, he cannot give to blood group O because blood group O has antibodies that are against the blood group B. For the case of co AB, this can, can only give to AB, his fellow AB. He can only give to his fellow and B, AB, but cannot give to a, either of these. It will fight. Either of the remaining three. He cannot give to blood group O, he cannot give to blood group a, B or blood group A, because he's a, they both have antibodies against him. So he, 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 he cannot, he's a selfish blood group that cannot be next to him. But, yeah, we see, he cannot donate to any, but he can only receive to all. 
why? It's because he's having both surface antigen, they can be uh, can match or that I mean that can, can react with this remaining body group with different with the other surface antigen. So for the case of universal donor, likewise is a universal donor is because he can give out due to lack of surface antigen but he cannot receive either of these three. Why? It's because his body is making up antibody that can fight all of these three. So he can only receive from his fellow blood group O. This is our explanation of how this thing is. So after the ABO system we go to the other system of antigen, surface antigen system we know as the recess factor originated from uh, the study was originated from a study on rhesus monkey so this rhesus monkey is where they, they identified the other RI system, the other mm, uh, blood group system known as the RI system or rhesus so in this case it's different from ABO it has a different categorization so even if the blood in the ABO system will match if A will match blood group A will match with the other blood group A we go to another category of uh, category of uh, blood compartmentalization of which you know a lesser system. If the lesser system will, diff will not match, then there will be another reaction. So the red blood cell then also have this antigen important here as the recess antigen. They also have this surface antigen recess. And about 85% of people have this antigen. So you see the majority of this uh, of individual within the world have the surface antigen races and they are lesser are known as the races positive and they do not therefore make anti races antibodies. So it's because they they have lesser uh, they are lesser positive or the red surface the red the red blood cell surface have lesser antibody or antigen the body cannot make cannot make the antibodies against this Races, uh, the races antigens but the remaining 15% of the population have no races antigen so they are known as races negative and it's because they have no races antigen then the body will fight will fight their body will make antibodies that will fight any blood that will have uh, races positive or will have the surface uh, the races surface antigen so RH negative individuals are, capa are capable of making anti cases antibody that are stimulated but are stimulated to do so in only certain circumstances or as a result of incompatible blood transfusion. So these recess antibodies that are formed by the recess negative individual or individual with who are lacking surface antigen or recess surface antigen are only formed or are only stimulated in certain circumstances. We shall see circumstances that can stimulate the body to promote this antibody. So we have seen here that it's only the lesser negative, as an individual who are lacking lesser antigen are the ones that are having lesser antibodies. But the individual who are having lesser positive or lesser antigen are they do not make lesser antibodies. So the point of this interest here will be the lesser negative that are capable to make lesser antibody once they are stimulated in certain circumstances. So here, sorry, this is when we describing the ABO system, not about the lesser factor. So we go to, yeah, here is all describing about the RH negative. So in, in RH negative is not that much detail is either you have the recess factor or you do not have the recess factor. If you have the recess factor or if you have the recess antigen, then your body cannot make the recess antigen. Cannot make uh, antibodies against the recess antigen. But if you have no recess antigen, that is you are, you are surface, your red blood cells have nothing, have no recess antigen, then your body will make recess antibodies. Just, just an example is that an individual, uh, the, in, a, in a ABO system, an individual with 
bad group O. In the case of bad group O, it's because their blood do not contain any the any antigen, any surface antigen. Then, by doing so, their body will make an antibody that will, will uh, against any uh, any 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 blood cell that will invade having different uh, having any antigen. You got their 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 cells, their cells have no antigen. They have no surface protein. So their body will make a antibody with a, so as to fight any cell that will have any anti anti antigen. So for this case, for the erasers, it's because their surface, the erasers negative of the the red blood cells have no erasers anti antigen. So the body makes their anti anti antibodies that will fight anything or any bad cell that will have erasers positive. So by do, by saying so, in the erasers system, if you take a erasers positive individual, that is an individual with a erasers antigen, and you transfuse, you make him to to you transfuse the blood to an individual with erasers negative, that is an individual having no erasers antigen. The body of the individual who is having no erasers antigen will identify that the blood that is it has been donated is having Resource factor is having resource antigen, and because it having resource anti antigen, it is different from what it has. I don't know that from what it has, it has no resource antigen. So it is formulated or it be stimulated to formulate resource uh, the resource antibodies. So the resource antibodies is going to fight the resource positive, and as a result of stimulation. So by that, by doing so, it is that called called agglutination, the agglutination and the hemolysis. So this factor is the one that differentiates if it happens maybe you have blood group O. You, you, you are transfused, you have blood group, o, blood group O, and the individual is transfusing you, you also is having blood group O. But it happens that you, 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 under, you undergo a transfusion reaction, transfusion reaction. The, the transfusion reaction will not be due to the OO transfusion, but it will be due to the lesser factor. Because one of the either of the individual is having resource factor and the other one is having no resource factor. So transmission reaction can occur either in a resource system or in a behavior system. That's why they have to screen uh, an individual with the to be transfused first in the ABO system. If they correspond or they become compatible, they have to uh, they have to screen also the resource system and if they found that they're not compatible then the transmission will not be safe. For the case of uh, of the pregnant women, we see that we have what we call a hemolytic disease of the newborn. If it happens that a, a pregnant woman with the resource negative a, is, is being pregnanted or is having a, a fetus having a resource positive, or he has, has, has inherited, as you said, the, the, the RHO. I mean the resources or OBO system, ABO system are inherited. If the fetus within the womb of uh, a pregnant woman with resources negative is resources positive, the antibodies, or they say the surface antibodies of the within the child or the fetus will trigger the the the, uh, the antibodies of the resources negative pregnant women. And as that of the trigger, the resources negative pregnant women will formulate, as you say, the resources negative uh, antibodies. Will formulate antibodies that will have that will go and fight the or will go and, and cause a, a reaction to an, a, to the fetus having resus negative. So the first in the first birth, the reaction will not be significant enough to cause death. But if it happens, the woman uh, gets pregnant, and the ne next time with no precautions or with no any treatment or management, the likelihood because the body will have mount an, enough amount of uh, RH, uh, RH antibodies that will go and fight against the, the, the new fetus having RH positive. So, like we will have what is called hemolytic disease of the newborn, or the fetus will have to die because the fetus will die in the womb as a result of uh, agglutination reaction and hemolysis that has, uh, that, that has occurred as a result of the reaction being the RH positive antibody 
antigen and the Rh negative antibody that are from the mother and the child. So this is all we have in the ABO system in races. This is all we are supposed to know. Uh, in the next session we'll see the cellular content.